Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So, um, today I'm going to be talking about my top 10 books I've read during this year so far. Um, the reason I'm not doing this at the end of the year is because most of my end of the year reading plans are just kind of sequels to books on this list. <laughs> so I feel like the results probably won't change much unless, like, I don't know, Dragon, Ra Dragon Riders of Porn 3 is like the greatest thing ever, which it, it probably won't be, because I'm not really enjoying that series that much. Um, but the reason I'm making a list like this this year, and not like the last two years I've done on this channel, is because I feel like A, I've read more books, and B, there's a lot more diversity in the books I've read. Like last year was just the Expand 6, the Expand 7, Song of Ice and Fire 3, is why, you know, just like constant of the same two series. So this one's a lot more versatile. So starting off with number 10, we have The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. So this is the first Stolt story collection in the series, and I... I've made several claims about this on the channel. I really prefer his older works than to his later works, so that's why this is on the top ten list, and his last bow isn't. So these stories are so original. Like this is this is um, Holmes in his prime, and a lot of the plot twists I didn't see coming. The characters of him and Watson are so fleshed out, and I, it's it's just a lot of fun. It's great fun. Um, Definitely recommend, if you're going to read any Sherlock stories, read this and um, the one I'm going to mention later. So, yeah. Uh, because unlike the other ones, which were kind of like mixed bags, every single one of these stories is a hit. And I love that. Now, speaking of old stuff, we have Gone with the Wind for number nine. Um, so this book, I loved the movie. I was not expecting to like this book so much. Um, it's it's set in the American Civil War, and it's about like rising tensions and about the um, Confederates losing their land. And it's kind of cool though because while I don't like the Confederates, it's kind of cool to see things from their perspective. And um, Scarlett O'Hara, one of the greatest written characters in history, is so insufferable. But at the same time, all the bad stuff that happens to her, you like you kind of feel bad for her at the same time. Um, it's very fast paced, even though it's like eleven hundred pages or twelve hundred pages. I don't even know. It's the longest book I've ever read, but it goes by so fast because you're so into it, and to the point where the four hour movie feels like now it could have been even longer. Uh, moving back on the Sherlock, which is uh, number eight spot going to be the memoirs of Sherlock Holmes. So this one puts it above the adventures of Sherlock Holmes. Um, basically like the equal except this one has probably my favorite um, my favorite story which is the final problem which originally was going to be Arthur Conan Doyle's way of killing off Sherlock for good until the fans begged him enough where he brought him back which I think was kind of a mistake. But anyway um, this story Sword Story Collection is incredible. Once again, like the Adventures of Sherlock Holmes, it's just bop after bop after bop. Um, bop means good, by the way. So, yeah, highly recommend these two collections. If you're looking into any Sherlock stories, definitely read those two. Um, yeah, the 2022 has been the year of Sherlock. Like, besides December or September of last year, I read study in Scarlet, the rest of it has been Solok, Solok, Solok. Okay, so, um, since these are both in the same series, I'm just gonna do, like, this is number seven, this is number six, um, the, the Obelisk Gate is my seventh place, and the Stone Sky is my sixth place. Um, this trilogy kind of, like, continues volume to volume with really no time skips at this point, um, so I kind of think of them as, like, one long book. Um, I really like these stories. They're written by N.K. Jemisin. Uh, it's kind of like a science fiction fantasy series. They're really light on the sci-fi. Um, and I love the magic system. I love the characters. I love the plot. So if you're looking for like a really good sci-fi um, fantasy series with also some good um, messages and themes, you know, about being an outcast and kind of 
you know, being hunted down for your powers. Um, just a very emotional story about like a messed up family, uh, dysfunctional families, uh, the apocalypse, the earth splitting up. You have all this stuff. I don't really want to get into spoilers with this. Um, but yeah, like I said, if you're into fantasy, I highly recommend it. And the way they finished it off in the third book, like I said, um, was just so good. It was so good. Um, parts of it were a little bit predictable, but some parts won't. Um, kind of keeps you on your toes. And I think it had satisfying endings for all of our major characters. Okay, up next, uh, in number fifth place, I'm going to be talking about The Lord of the Rings by J.R.R. Tolkien. Uh, fifth place is The Fellowship of the Rings. And the reason I'm putting it this low, even though I love The Fellowship of the Rings, is just, I feel like the first half of the book very slogs through it. We take a long time getting out of uh, the Shire, a lot longer than I would have wanted. Um, even though I did like Tom Bombadil, I feel like the rest of it was kind of like, let's just go to this end. Let's just go to this end. I don't know, that could have been trimmed a little bit. But once we get out of the Shire, and once the Fellowship is formed, it becomes so much more, like, interesting and deep. You realize that the world is so much bigger than the Shire, and these threats are real. I kind of like the, like, the constant danger aspect. And, of course, Frodo is really well written. Gandalf's cool as always. Bilbo kind of has a happy ending, because this is kind of the end of his arc. Um, and the presence of the ring is shown, but not exactly, like, to the effect as it is later, but we could see how it corrupts people. Um, overall, a, a very good first book of the series. Um, I really enjoyed it, and the only reason it's not high is, well, because of the <laughs> Shire stuff. In A Lord of the Rings, number fourth place, I'm gonna put in The Two Towels, which is the second book. Um, so this book is where things get really interesting because it's not just from Frodo's perspective anymore. We kind of divide the book in half. The first half is told by like Aragorn and uh, Merry and Pippin's perspective, and the second half is from Frodo's perspective. So this does the book so much justice because it expands it. Now the world is as big as it ever will was, and I guess kind of will be. Um, and all the characters are so just well developed. Mary and Pippin get a lot more to do with the with the Ents. Aragorn, um, we get to see more of his badassery. Frodo and Sam, we get to see how much they really care for each other. And we're introduced to that son of a bitch, Gollum, who's a very interesting character as always. And I, I know I'm going to be allowed into spoilers, but honestly, who doesn't know the plot of all the Rings at this point? Uh, number three, I'm going to be talking about Leviathan Falls, which is the ninth and final book in The Expanse. So, I started this book in December, but I finished it in January. So, I guess it counts on this list, because I finished it, you know. Um, that's how it works. So, I think this was a spectacular way of ending the series. Um, often when you have, like, really long TV shows or book series... It's very daunting to finish it, especially if, like, you have all these arcs and set up and stuff from other books. Um, and I think it nailed it. It nailed it perfectly. Um, all the character arcs were finished well. All the, like, the big battles were very satisfyingly concluded. Um, I wish the Sci-Fi Channel would air it, but, you know, whatever. At least we got the full three books adapted. But yeah, um, you know, after like almost two years of reading it, it was very emotional when I finally got to the end. So, good job, James S. A. Coy. Okay, number two on this list is Return of the King. Um, and what a way to end the series. Honestly, um, the way they defeat the villain isn't exactly how you'd think. They put, kind of throw a little twist there. And I love how much time is spent dealing with the aftermath of the big battle. Lots of stories end with the big battle, and then that's it. Which does nothing wrong with that. But I really like how it's not the end for the characters. They still got to return to their normal lives and stuff. Some adjust very well, but some of them can't go back to that life. And I think that's very interesting to read about. 
Um, but also before that, you got like all these cool battle scenes. You get the ghost pirates. You get the whole I am no man scene. Um, you get the whole Gollum resolution. It's just brilliant, and it's why much my favorite book. Though I'm I'm not gonna talk about <laughs> the appendices because I don't think they'll 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 worth it. Like I do like finding out what happened to Aragorn after it and all the all the other characters, but a lot of the appendices is just a bunch of nonsense. <laughs> that I don't, I know I'm gonna get blasted for saying that, but I don't know. At least I read it. But yeah, Lord of the Rings. I could see why it's such a like well loved series and that influenced so many authors. Um great books. You know, I think this Tolkien guy I think he might make it big someday. So I was very prepared to just put Return of the King on the top of my list, but then I read I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCordy and oh God, this was crazy. This was great. Um, so I've been a fan of Jeanette McCordy's for, since, like, iCarly was on. Like, I, I was with iCarly since season one. It was, like, my first show, <laughs> my first show you know. Um, and to find out how miserable she was, it was very sad. And I can't really watch the show the same way anymore. But the way she writes is so detailed, authentic, honest. It's sad, but it's all, she also... M- puts it in a humorous way, which is very entertaining, because if it's just, like, sad thing after sad thing described sadly, it's, um, I just get really depressed. But the way she writes it, um, it's like, you know, when people say, you know, oh, years from now you're gonna laugh about it, that's kind of what this book is. And she does a very good job of writing it. Um, I'm glad she's kind of, like, had this sort of self-love, I guess, or repentance, I don't really know, um, but yeah, I'm glad her mom died too, she was kind of a bitch. So those are my top 10 books I've read so far this year, if any of the other books I read this year would crack the list, then I'll probably just mention it in the description, I'll, you know, um, let me know you guys' favorite books all this year, uh, I'd really like to know, because I love getting book recommendations, so leave those in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll be back tomorrow with another Sherlock video, talking about one of the Casebook of Sherlock Holmes stories, so subscribe below for the end of that, and until next time, peace.